Hi, so I'm pretty sure everybody knows if you take a copper wire and hold it between two magnets, pass a current down it, it'll move. It's a motor. This is courtesy of Michael Faraday. Equally, of course, the opposite is true. If you move that copper wire through the magnetic field, you'll get a generator. And generators and motors are really just the opposite of each other. But the principal component is the conductor will either move through a magnetic field if you put a current through it, or you will generate a current if you move it through a magnetic field. Now, this, in theory, should be true of any conductor. It shouldn't really matter what that conductor is, a lump of copper, a lump of aluminium, even salty water or a plasma. It should all do that job. And because this troubled Faraday, he spent quite a bit of time thinking about it. And while down at the Thames, he was having a look at it, and this is the bit where it runs into the sea, it's kind of salty, because the Thames is throwing, flowing through a magnetic field. And if a conductor, like salty water, is flowing through a field, it should be generating. And Faraday tried to measure it. And he failed, unfortunately. He gave it a go in 1832. But it was in 1851 it was actually measured. They measured current across the Thames, which is awesome stuff, if you think about it. And of course, that opens up a whole new set of possibilities, because here we've got motors with no moving parts. We've got generators where they're not going to wear out. And of course, that caught people's imaginations, and a ton of experimentation was done on it. And it turns out it's actually quite difficult, mostly because it shorts a bit easily. But at the end of the day, they did create a structure that looks like this. And the Japanese used it to create a boat, the Yamamoto One, and they made that in the 1990s. It now sits in a museum. And there were plans to actually use them in um, submarines, of all things. But the really curious thing, the really interesting thing, is that they can equally be turned into a generator. And we can make our own MHDD generator actually rather easily. So what I've got here and here are two steel plates with magnets on them. They're right there. A couple of magnets right there, and they're opposite faces, north and south. So if I swing those together, we have a magnetic field. Now I've got a couple of bits of copper here, and they're set at 90 degrees. So if I pop them at 90 degrees to each other, there we go. So the magnets are like that, the copper's like that, and the field is running between those two magnets. We have, in fact, an MHD generator right there. All we've got to do is supply it with a conductive fluid of some kind or other. Now we could use salty water, or we could use a plasma, either are really good. What I'm going to use is a blowtorch. That creates a very low grade plasma. And of course I've set up the um, multimeter here with my camera. So we can take a shot of the multimeter as we put a flame up through there. And what you'll see is that this thing generates. There we go, get a few millivolts out of it. Now, of course, it's a very primitive setup, so it doesn't generate much. And there are better ways to actually get this to generate more. One is seeding it, because what's happening is the plasma is creating ions, and they're shooting up there. The magnets are reflecting the ions into positive and negative, and they're hitting those two copper plates, and so we're getting current flow. Now, if we were to seed that, so we sprinkle some salt on it, basically, then we load it with ions already and we get much better generation. And that's actually what's going on at the moment. These are a, a, a set of magnets that were put around the pipes of hospitals for demineralizing the water. And it's quite a mighty set of magnets. Now, if we slice down there and open it up, then we can pull the magnet set out of it. And what we get are four ceramic magnets. Uh, I think they're two centimeters by five centimeters by a centimeter thick so we have a whole load of magnets now of course the thing you've got to ask then is what do you do with a bunch of magnets like this well what we're going to do is make an mhd generator so first things first let's slice them out and they come out as a block and the block separates really relatively easily and we need about 20. so we have our bunch of ceramic magnets reclaimed or bought and three steel plates these plates are 125 millimeters square they just have to be uh or one millimetre thick plates that I had lying around. Bit of super glue along the line on the steel plate. And then with the north pole, uh, a pole facing up, stick the magnets on the plate. Now on the opposite plate, you want the 
other poles. So if that's that pole, those remember it's uh, unlike poles attract, like poles repel. So those are the two like poles. We don't want that and that. We want that and that where there's attraction on the other plate. And we glue those down. So once we've attached our magnets to the opposite pole, we need to attach another steel plate to the top of the magnets. As you can see, I've done that. We attach that other side here. And that is the magnetic field of our MHD device. Okay, we need some straight lengths of copper wire. This is actually uh, 18SWG pulled out of some housing cable. I think it's 25 millimeters uh, cross-sectional area. Anyway, we need to bend some up into a triangle like that, and I'm going to do three of them. And then we need two bent in an L shape like that. When we've done that, we need to bend over the ends there about a centimetre. Now I've taken this and I've marked out the area it will cover, which is right there. Then with my bent copper, what I want to do is put them at an angle so that they stay inside of the area that I've just drawn. So sort of like that. So there it is wired up and you can see that those little triangles have formed a point in series. So here's the ink, because the first triangle crosses over, second triangle crosses over the triangle and so on. Now I've made this out of copper. Copper's not the best. Copper will do fine for demonstration, but if you're really thinking about doing this uh, in a real environment, you're probably going to need to be thinking about tungsten or nichrome. Nichrome is really easy to get hold of. It's the stuff they use for kiln wire. So kiln wire will last really well. Copper, not so much. But all we have to do with this now is take our magnetic shell that we made earlier drop it over the top and that's our MHD generator done. Now we need to feed it. I feed it by putting a flame in here. We're going to blow a flame in there from a blowtorch. Here I've got a little glass tube and a zippo wick. So let's arrange something. Okay, that's it set up. All I've done is fill that little jar with this and this is a saturated potassium nitrate solution. So we're spraying potassium ions in there and I'm going to turn on my blowtorch Pop it there, attach the multimeter to it, and we'll see if we get a reading. How about that? 0.6 of a volt from those four junctions if we seed it with potassium in a 700 degree flame. Now, if we shoot a flame through this with nothing going on, there is a thermionic effect. We will get a few millivolts. But when we have the magnetic field, we get a much higher voltage. And that's because the magnetic field causes ion-electron separation, and so we get a voltage and we'll get some current out of that. Now, the magnets are setting up a static and magnetic field north-south across those wires as the flame goes through them. And parallel to a magnetic field, of course, is an electrostatic field. So electrostatics are obvious, of, often seen as the electrical equivalent of magnetics as a relationship between the two. So it occurred to me that perhaps we would get a result if we put an electrostatic field here. So instead of having the magnets on the steel plates, all I've done is connect them up to this. This is a high voltage generator. You can buy these things on eBay. And they range from sort of uh, 5,000 volts to, this one is 20 kilovolts actually. So if I bang 12 volts in there, I'm supposed to get 20 kilovolts out, and I can get an electrostatic field formed between these two plates of in the order of 15, 20 kilovolts. What I want to do is show you what happens when I shoot a flame through there, and we have an electrostatic field going on. There we go, a few millivolts. Now let's turn on our high voltage generator. <laughs> That's huge! <laughs> okay, so I've put a resistor in series. It's a 220 ohm resistor. Let's turn up the voltage. 
Remember there's about 20,000 kilovolts between those two plates, so do your best to avoid touching them or you'll know and you'll be sorry. So now it's got an actual load on it. Look at that, under load. So I don't know about you, but I found that really exciting because that was producing actual power, around about 10 milliamps or so, a couple of volts. And we haven't yet put any metal ions in there. So we were to um, spray metal ions in there like we did in the MHD, we could expect it to go up. So it clearly is an area that is of interest because it, it gives a result that I think is quite impressive. Uh, and that was putting an electrostatic field between the two plates rather than a magnetic field. Anyway, I'm hoping this excites some folk and you give it a go and see what you can do with it. Try spraying metal ions in there. I'll certainly be having a better look at it because that was a very exciting result for me. But then I guess I lead the life of a nerd. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.